already on our chapter 6 um, of our discussion. Um, wait for a moment. Okay, so again, good morning everyone for our topic for today. Under chapter 6, managing recreations, parks, and services. So now we will tackle about on how are we going to manage or operate a certain recreational facilities, parks, and services. But before we move forward, can you please um, read the learning objectives, Kathy? After the completion of this module, stud students will be able to define what is management, deliberate the characteristic of managers, discuss the classification of leisure service managers, enumerate the skills of the recreation, parks, and leisure service manager, and distinguish between public governmental organizations, nonprofit government organizations, and commercial or private enterprises. Okay, thank you, Kathy. So, plus, these are the learning objectives um, that you should be able to acquire at the end of our discussion. So, let's now move forward with our official discussion. So, first, let's define who are managers. So, um, on our day-to-day -day lives in every facilities where we uh, um, go or where we um, have our activities, meron doon mga tao where they are the people who responsible manages the entire facilities as well as the entire employee. So now, let's tackle about the manager. So a person responsible for supervising and motivating employees and for directing the progress of an organization. So there, are, there is no universal definition of a manager. In fact, there is some disagreement as to whether we should think of the individuals in management tools in recreation parks and leisure service organizations as leaders or managers. So, plus in every organization, always remember the tasks and responsibilities of managers are vary from time to time. So, iba iba yung tasks and responsibilities of every managers on each organization depende sa binibigay ng management. But as a whole, um, please remember that managers are the people responsible in supervising and motivating employees on the overall operations of the business. So parang siya yung pinakamataas or yung pinaka-leader ng isang department or ng isang group where he or she directed or command a certain task to each and every employee. So these are the managers. Moving forward, let this, let's discuss what is management. So when we say management class, ang katandaan nyo lang, um, Management have uh, several definitions. However, um, it has uh, five primary functions, which is planning, organizing, command, coordination, and control. So these are the actions that um, an organization is uh, going to undergo or uh, to do in order for them to do their operational services. When we say management class, paano nila pinapatakbo yung business nila or yung facilities where they belong? So, ano yung mga standard operating procedures na sinusunod ng bawat empleyado ng isang organization or ng isang business? So, yun yung tinatawag natin, management. Next, there are two types of organizational goals. So, last time in our previous discussion, we discussed that organizational goals are the mission or the vision, the objectives of a certain organization. Ito yung um, bagay or ito yung um, things na gusto nilang ma-achieve in a long run or in a certain period of deadlines or timelines. So, meron daw tayong dalawang uri ng organizational goals. The first one is operational. When we say operational, um, it's effort to make effective decision, use, use its resources efficiently, adapt to changing um, uh, circumstances, gain community support, Recruit, supervise, productive staff members, or develop partnerships. So when we say operation class, it's all about um, equipment, machineries. So the overall operations of the business, paano siya tumatakbo, paano siya gumagalaw. 
mostly mostly ang um, action siya or operational efforts. However, meron tayong isa naman yung outcome directed. When we see when we say um outcome directed class six for six uh, to accomplish through its programming efforts might involve improving health and fitness of its participants, reducing juvenile delinquency. Pag sinabi natin ju juvenile delinquency class, ito yung mga bad um, actions or bad attitudes ng mga employees inside the organization. So, binabawasan natin yun kapag ang goal natin ay outcome directed. Or pwede rin namang um, family unity. When we say family unity, meron kayong working bal um life and work uh, balance inside your organization. So, ino-operan lang kayo ng 8 hours of work because your management is very particular with your rest days or with your mental health. So, hindi nila kayo gustong um, magkaroon ng stress um, environment or depressed um, self or depressed emotion. So, another is improving racial relation. When we say improving racial relations, class. Um, ito yung without um, judgment on the cultural differences of an employees. So, tandaan, class, when we say operational, these um, efforts is something to do with the overall operations of the business. Yung paano gumagalaw yung mga machineries and equipments inside the organization. Kapag outcome directed naman, mostly nakapokus siya sa employees or sa participants inside the organizations. Moving forward, we have types of decisions class um, in the management. First is emergency decision. When we say emergency decision, this decisions needed under crisis. It requires quick, a uh, clear, quick, and preferred actions. When we say emergency decision, kailangan mabilis yung pag come up mo na gagawin yung actions. Katulad na yung pandemic, hindi naman lahat ng businesses inaasahan na maaapektuhan sila ng pandemic. Yung mga um, amusement parks, yung mga hotels, mga travel agencies. So, dapat magkaroon sila ng emergency decision during crisis or during pandemic. So, dapat mag-isip agad sila ng panibagong paraan how are we going to do their actions towards pandemic. So, syempre, hindi allowed lumabas or hindi allowed yung mga um, big gatherings or mga maraming gatherings. So, anong decisions yung ikakam up mo quickly para mas masustain mo yung business mo despite of the pandemic. So, that's what we call emergency decision. Biglaan or quick decision. Next is routine decision. When we say routine decision, decisions revolve around the everyday running of the organization. Ito yung mga decision na ginagawa ng mga managers, ng mga supervisor um, from the from their day-to-day -day job or day-to-day -day works organization. For example, um, you are working inside the amusement park. So, ang, ang rules doon ay not allowed ang PWD sa roller coaster rides. So, routine decision yon. Kasi everyday pinapatupad nyo yun or everyday ini-implement nyo yung decision nyo na yun na hindi dapat allowed ang mga PWD um, to all um, roller coaster rides for their safety um, for process. So, that's what we call routine decision. Next, debatable decisions. When we say deb debatable decision class, decisions are debatable because they are changed the status quo. They are debatable because the chances are that they improve through consultations given effective relationship. For example, um, you are working inside the park so, may dumating na magbabarkadas. Doon sa magbabarkadas, 20s yung dumating pero hindi sila nakabook na group tour. So, meron kayong prices na for group tour, for individual persons, for family. However, hindi sila nagbook pero pumunta sila doon sa, um, sa park nyo or doon sa um, zoo na kung saan nagtatrabaho ka. Now, um, as a supervisor or as, as a manager, um, yung cashier doon, ayaw niyang bigyan ng group tour kasi hindi naman daw nag-book eh, nag-walk-in lang. Wala yun sa um, requirements niyo na kapag nag-walk-in, pwede bigyan ng group tour. So, ikaw as a manager, um, you will do um, a debatable decision. No, we can give them the group tour package even if they did not book online or um, they did not call us ahead of time kasi um, their numbers will fall under group tour. So, um, if binigyan natin yan ngayon ng group tour, even if they, not, they did not book online, babalik ulit sila kasi 
um, we give them freebies or we give them um, the group tour packages. So that's what we call debatable decision. Um, nilalaban mo yung mga decisions na alam mo makakatulong within your organizations or mas magiging exceptional yung service nyo with your clients. So that's the um, types of decision, emergency decision, routine decision, and debatable decision. Next, we have nine stages of decision-making process. So the, per the nine stages are define the problem. When we say define the problem class, alamin mo muna yung problema. Um, saan ba nagmumula yung challenges or yung um, problems that you need to solve. Second, gathering information. You will um, do research. You will do you will do feasibility study. Kukunin mo yung mga informations related to your problem. Once you gather the information, last, consultation to others. Ihingi ka ng payo or ng advice sa other people na alam mong matutulungan ka nila dun sa problem mo in terms with your business or in terms with your services. After that, pag nabigyan ka na nila ng advices or ng uh, mga payo nila, dun mo nakukunin yung alternatives or choices. Mamimili ka na or uh, magpipik ka na ng mga ideas or ng mga decisions dun na pwede mong gawin or pwede mong i-implement. After that, Implications. Pag sinabing implications class, pag ginawa ko pa tong decisions na to or pag ginawa ko ba tong choices na to, ano bang mangyayari sa business ko or sa organizations ko? Ano yung magiging um, effect ko niya doon sa organizations ko? If I will do these alternatives or these choices. Next is decide the course of action. So, nalaman mo na. So, halimbawa, ginawa ko, ay, pag ginawa kong bundle yung um prices ng products and services ko sa amusement park ko, ito yung magiging effect niya. Um, Kukunti man yung kita ko, pero dadami yung customers ko. So, papasok dun yung deciding the course of action. So, gagawin mo ba siya or hindi mo siya gagawin? Next is communicating the decision. So, for example, napag-decisionan mo as a manager or, or as a supervisor, oh, ito yung gagawin natin, sige, itutuloy natin tong bundle or yung buy one, take one promo natin. Kasi nakita ko na pag ginawa natin ito, dadami yung customers natin. So, i-communicate mo na ngayon sa employees mo or sa mga staff mo or ito, meron tayong project or meron tayong promo na buy one, take one. Pag may client na nagtanong, i-offer nyo ito sa kanila. Sabihin nyo, ito yung mechanics para ma-avail nila. Yun yung tinatawag natin communicating the decision. Next, implementation. So, alam na ng staff nyo, alam na ng mga empleyados mo. So, ngayon, sila as an employees or as staff, ipopromote na nila to or market na nila. Limbawa, may pumunta sa um, organization mo or sa business mo, for example, amusement parks. So, lima sila or anong sila. So, sabi ng staff mo, ma'am, meron po kaming buy one, take one, tamang-tama po, anong po kayo. Pwede po kayong mag-avail nun. Um, three tickets lang po yung bibili niyo per six person. So, that's what we call implementation. So, ginagawa na nila yung course of action. And next is evaluation and feedback. So, for example, after three months, nag-meeting kayo with your staff or with your employees, so, titignan niyo yung trajectory ng benta niyo or ng sales niyo. Tumaas ba? Or bumaba ba? Or dumami ba yung customers niyo? Kung dumami yung customers niyo, um, ano yung percentage na mas marami? Millennials ba? Families? Um, barkadas? Couples? So, these are the nine stages of decision making a process. So, as a manager class, you should know how uh, these nine stages of the decision making process works. Because when you enter in the industry, when you become a manager, you will do um, these steps of decision making process. So, six factors of productive management. So, paano daw natin masasabi na yung isang organization ay merong uh, quality production or maganda yung pagpapalakad sa isang organization? Una, participant focus. So, mer customer, pag sinabing participant focus class, customer-centered cent sila. They are aiming for the best of um, exceptional service and products to their customers. Gusto nila laging satisfied yung customers nila. Laging happy yung customers nila. 
um, yung mga ginagawa nilang promotions, yung mga ginagawa nilang efforts to improve their products and services ay focus sa needs and wants ng clients nila. Next, innovation. When we say innovation, um, they are always upgrading from time to time. They are innovating new ideas that will help them um, improve their products and services. Innovating means creating new ideas or inventing new um, tasks or new responsibilities that will help them um, encourage their participants or their clients to um, sustain their organizations or their, their business. Next, leadership. So the leadership or the leaders inside the organizations are open for communication. Ibig sabihin, they are listening to their um, employees or to their staffs. They are not a boss. When we say a boss kasi class, nagtuturo lang siya. Utos lang siya ng utos. But as a leader, um, you are walking um, the talk. Ibig sabihin ko, ano yung sinasabi mo, yun din yung ginagawa mo or yun din yung pinapractice mo. Next, employee involvement. When we say employee involvement class, the management or the organizations um, create programs and activities where they involving or they um, encouraging their employees and staffs to participate. Katulad ng team building class. Um, team building involves all the employees um, in decision making and strategizing um, in the operations of the business. And last but not the least, the least um, process improvement. So, lagi silang um, aiming for um, excellence or aiming for success or aiming for um, exceptional effort. Lagi nilang ina-upgrade yung mga products and services nila, yung operations nila. Nagpapatraining sila sa mga empleyado nila or sa staff nila para mas gumaling pa yung skills and competencies ng staff nila in order for them to serve their clients or their employees well. So, these are the six factors of productive management. Last, sorry, change management. When we say change management, pag nakikita nila na hindi effective yung mga managers, yung mga supervisors, yung mga vice president, president, nagkakaroon sila ng votation. Nagkakaroon sila ng um, open debate kung papalitan ba nila or babaguhin nila yung pagpapatakbo sa kumpanya. Kung halimbawa, itong proseso na to na hindi gumagana yung 8 hours at uh, 10 hours work a day. So, babaguhin nila yun kasi hindi yun effective. Or for example, hindi effective yung um, magta-time in and time, time out ka using the paper uh, machine yung meron ka lang isusulat kasi nagdadaya yung ibang employees or hindi sila um, pumapasok on time. So, babaguhin mo yun gagawin mong bondy clock which is using the fingerprints. So that's what we call management or change management. You are changing the operations or the model of the business if you see that uh, it is not effective. So these are the six factors. Next, skills and characteristics of a manager class. So as a manager, um, these are the skills and characteristics na meron ka. So in the future, I believe um, some of you will become managers, supervisors, officers. So, dapat ito yung mga skills and characteristics na ina-uphold nyo. Una, leadership. So, dapat meron kang capacity to direct people. So, pinagkakatiwalaan ka ng tao. Meron kang um, karisma na maging leader. Nakikita ka ng mga tao na, ay, ito pwede natin itong maging leader kasi very active to. Next, reliability. When we say reliability, reliable. Um, maaasahan ka. Halimbawa, si Kyla. Kyla, meron ka ba yung, um, um, alam mo ba yung um, ganitong program, yung um, Adobe Acrobat? Hindi ko kasi to alam eh. Pwede ba mo ba akong turuan? So, si Kyla, alam niya yung Adobe Acrobat, how it will work. So, re reliable siya. Um, maaasahan siya just in case may mga bagay na kailangan alamin. Um, nabibigay niya agad yung informations or nakakapagturo agad siya. Next, expertise. So, expert ka sa isang skills. So, sa isang bagay. For example, um, si Jeriel, um, expert siya sa editing or sa video editing. So, 
pwede siyang maging uh, marketing manager kasi very expert siya in terms of video editing, um, multimedia skills, marami siyang ganun. Expert siya about communications, marketing communications. So in the future, pwede siyang maging marketing manager or director of marketing communications. Next, time management. Plus, it is very important that if you become a leader or if you become a manager, you should know how to handle your time or how to manage your time. Hindi pwedeng lagi kang cramming yung um, time. Bukas na yung project natin. Ngayong 12 midnight pa lang kayo gagawa. Ngayon pa lang kakausapin yung mga team members mo. Or for example naman, um, wala kang time management. Meron kang 8 hours a day. Yung 6 hours a day mo, lahat yun, more on gala ka, more on parties ka. Tapos yung 2 hours, dun mo lang kukontakin yung mga team members mo. Oh guys, gawa na tayo, tapos na akong mag-party. So, wala yung time management. So, time management is one of the important um, characteristics if you, um, or um, skills if you want to become a manager in the future. Next, resilient. Class, when we say resilient, you are very adaptive. Um, hindi ka na, hindi ka bigla-biglang sumusuko sa konting problema lang. Hindi porke tanin ba, um, Meron kayong project, meron kayong video presentation kasi hindi lang gumagana yung sound. Iiyak ka na or uh, mag-give up ka na sa sabihin mo sa team member mo, guys, um, give up na natin po, hindi ko na kaya. So as a leader, you should be resilient. Kailangan, you should know how to stand up um, many times even if you are encountering difficulties and challenges. Because as a team leader, ikaw yung inaasahan ng team member mo. Kung ikaw mismo as a team, um, bibigay ka kaagad. So, paano na yung team members mo? So, hindi na sila makakapilos, hindi na sila makakagalaw kasi wala na yung um, yung person na kung saan um, inaay nila or kinakalo nila. Next, communication. Plus, as a team leader or as a manager, you should know how to communicate your thoughts. Hindi ka dapat magsalita ng mga vulgar words or ng mga bad words in terms of your employees. Even if may nagawa silang hindi maganda. Dapat you should know how to communicate with them professionally. Hindi ka rin dapat porque best friend mo yung isang team members mo. Um, lahat sa kanya mo lang sinasabi yung plans mo. Dapat all your plans or all your strategies and tactics should be communicated um, within the team or for all the teammates. Next is people skills. When we say people skills class, magaling ka makisama or magaling ka makisalamuha sa tao. Um, because we all know that people have different attitudes and characteristics. So, ikaw, as a manager or as a leader, you should know paano ka makikisama sa kanila. Meron ka dyan ka-member na masungit. Meron kang ka-member dyan na introvert. Meron ka namang ka-member dyan na bossy rin. Gusto, leader din siya. Pero ikaw yung manager, ikaw yung leader. So, how are you going to um, handle those kinds of attitudes towards your members. So, dapat meron kang people skills. Marunong kang makisama, you know how to handle your people. And lastly, organization. Dapat organize ang leader class. Hindi pwedeng um, meron kayong projects, tapos sasabihin mo, oh, ikaw na, um, Isaac, ikaw na bahala dito. Pag tinanong sa'yo ni Isaac, um, ay, di pa anong gagawin ko dito? Ikaw na bahala, alam mo na yan. So, hindi siya pwedeng ganun. Dapat organize ka, i-delegate mo yung responsibilities and tasks ng members mo um, clearly. Alam dapat nila yung mechanics, yung instructions, bibigyan mo sila ng malinaw na instructions para mas ma-execute nila yung task na pinapagawa mo sa kanila. Hindi pwedeng ibibigay mo na lang sa kanya bigla na hindi mo pinapaliwanag ng tama. Next, lastly, is risk taker. Class as a leader, you should be a risk taker. Um, you should know how to take the leap of faith. Kailangan marunong kang tumalon. Kailangan marunong kang tumaya as a leader. Kasi, hindi naman all the time ay mawe-wake nyo na ay ito yung dapat natin gawin. May mga oras or may mga panahon na kailangan mo mag-decide kahit hindi ka sigurado. So, that's what we call risk taker or risk taking. So, these are the skills and characteristics of a managers. Classifications of leisure service managers class. So, yung sa mga leisure facilities, ano bang tawag? Or ano ba yung classification ng mga service managers? Una, the supervisor. So, its primary function is supervise or to, um, to motivate the subordinates responsible to him or her. Plus, nung supervisor ako, I am handling under my... Ang, ang breakdown kasi niyan class is um, senior project manager or director project manager. Next is manager 
Next is supervisor and then your subordinate. So, nung supervisor ako class, I am handling four persons under my umbrella. So, ang ginagawa ko when we when I am handling those people in sa, um, in my umbrella, so, I'll be the one motivating them to do the project. So, I am assisting them on the training, especially pag may bagong pasok na rock and fire or assistance. I am the one training them or ito yung dapat gawin at ganito pa na gumawa ng events. Um, when we are doing partnership, ito yung mga materials na ginagawa natin. So, that's what we call supervisor. Um, tatanda nyo, when we say supervisor, supervise or meron kayong supervision. Lahat nakikita nyo or malawak yung paningin nyo dun sa bawat aspects ng project. Next is the bureaucrat. When we say the bureaucrat, um, this is to manage an organization adhering to its policies, procedures, and rules. So, ito naman yung mga tao na nagpapatupad ng mga rules and regulations inside the organization. So, sila yung umiikot inside the organizations. For example, o yan, hindi yan pasok sa standard natin. Dapat, ang spacing ng boots per boots ay 2.3 meters. Yung spacing mo, 2 meters lang. Adjust mo yan. So, yun yung tinatawag natin bureaucrat. Sila yung nagpapatupad ng mga policies and procedures inside the organization. Next is the manager. So, now, when you are the manager class, under mo yung supervisor and the bureaucrat. Ikaw yung um, selected person na may intellectual um, capacity to handle everything. Nasa yung lahat ng skills. Pag supervisor kasi class, kung meron tayong six characteristics, three lang yung nasa kanya or two lang yung nasa kanya. Yung bureaucrat naman, either sa policies lang kasi siya nakapokus. Ang manager sa lahat yan nakapokus. Trainings, policies and procedures, decision making, sa kanya lahat nagmumula yung decision making process. So these are the classifications of leisure service managers. Now, um, what are the skills of the recreations Parts and leisure service manager, ano yung mga skills na dapat meron ka pag nagtatrabaho ka sa mga recreational and leisure facilities. Una, technical skills. So, tend to be more important for lower level managers. Pag sinabing technical skills, um, alam mo paano paganahin or patakbuhin yung mga equipments, yung mga machines sa um, organization. Alam mo, nasa parts ka, paano patakbuhin yung roller coaster, paano patakbuhin yung bump park. So, technical skills yun about machineries and equipment. Human skills. When we say human skills or people skills class is you know how to handle people. You know how to um, communicate with different kinds and attitudes of people. So, maka, um, alam mo paano sila pakisamahan niya. Conceptual skills. When we say conceptual skills class, um, these skills are more, more uh, focused about um, tactics or strategizing. Ibig sabihin, um, pag meron kang problem, mag, magkakaisip ka agad ng concepts na pwede mong i-connect doon na pwede mong gawa ng solutions or pwede mong gawa ng um, strategy in order for you to solve that problems. Next, um, what is recreation parts? leisure and service organization. So, pag sinabing mga re recreation parts and leisure service organization class, um, ito yung mga amusement parks, mga um, zoos, lahat ng recreational facilities, lahat ng leisure facilities, resorts, um, ano pa ba, hotels, organizations, parts siya ng mga uh, recreational and leisure services. So, technically, naulit lang naman siya from our previous discussion. So, meron tayong three basic types of um, recreation parks and leisure organizations. Una, public government organization. Plus, ito yung mga recreational and leisure facilities na pag-aari ng gobyerno. Yung mga walang bayad kung saan pwede kayong pumunta. Katulad ng, for example, di ba yung um, sikat ngayon, yung Dolomite, wala namang bayad yun, libre. O kaya sa Manila um, Park, yung nandun sa may katabi ng uh, malapit sa... Manila City Hall, yung mga parks na libre kung saan ginagawa ng mga gobyerno or Luneta Park. So, yan, government organization yan. Next, non-profit organization. Ito yung mga NGOs class, yung mga volunteers na gumagawa lang ng mga recreational facilities, um, which is not part of the government or the private 
sector. And last but not the least, yung commercial and enterprises. Sorry, mali yung spelling ko. It should be S. Um, commercial enterprises na si mga public, ah, sorry, mga private um, organization katulad ng, yung may mga bayad katulad ng Enchanted Kingdom, Star City, um, ano pa ba, um, mga Manila Zoo, Abilon Zoo, mga um, ano nito? Hotels and different facilities. So lahat ng may bayad part siya ng commercial enterprises. So, part siya, merong sole, and under commercial enterprises plus, meron tayong sinatawag na sole proprietorship. When we say sole proprietorship, isang tao lang yung magmamayari ng business. Second is partnership. Dalawang tao yung magmamayari ng business. And corporations, maraming tao yung magmamayari ng business. So, yun yung tinatawag natin, um, different um, ownership of commercial enterprises. Prices. So that's the end of our discussion. Okay, wait now.